Alrighty, welcome one, welcome all. It is the Richmond Gooners podcast after a long layoff for reasons. I'm back, bitch! We back, bitch! It is Sunday, <laughs> March 6th. Match week something or other, I've kind of stopped keeping track of the numbers yeah, because COVID made it fucking impossible. Yep. Anyway, I'm Ryan here with Joey. Can you take me higher? And with Will today. Hello, hello. So yeah. Higher in the table, goddammit. We, we are, are fourth we are, right now. We are marching our way up there. We started the day in sixth, but you know, that was even on points at West Ham for fifth. It was just a, you know, and differential was even, I want to say was even as well. It was just a second and or third tiebreaker. Because we were, we were one ahead of them. I can't remember one ahead of them like a couple weeks ago, but it was it was close. But yeah. we we've leapfrogged a couple teams, and we have we have seventy two games in hand yeah. uh, on most of the teams above us. So, so yeah, I mean we're we're, we're in a good spot. So we, we are in a good spot, and I I, I just want to come out and say that I, I was in January at the end of January, uh, I was part of the contingent that was really upset at the lack of activity, yeah. and I thought that it, it was my opinion at that time that. I wasn't gonna. I, I was hopeful of, of finishing the top four, but I wasn't gonna say, "Oh, well, we're definitely gonna do it." I wasn't gonna say that we're definitely not weren't gonna do it, but I Our was. I was leaning towards being ready to be disappointed. Yeah. Um. But I gotta say, if if I mean if the season's not over yet, but it's trending towards me being very very wrong, which I'm so happy with. <laughs> yeah. I'm told Will. I said if I'm wrong about this, I'll eat my hat. I'll fucking deep fry that bitch with buffalo sauce. Yeah, because 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 uh, something has happened. I don't know if it's just a continuation of the culture change or the paradigm shift with 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 the manager, but something has happened, and, and we just look more solid. As an Arsenal fan, I'm so used to you know what I like to call puckered butthole time, which happened it in this happen game today. too. Yeah. But, but but in these games, we're seeing more and more that we're not giving up winning positions and we're even scoring a couple late yep. goals here and there yep. and uh, it's just with, uh, with every passing week my, my butthole puckers less and less and less <laughs> and that's a nice feeling because it's quite tired well see here's <laughs> the thing you missed the first 10 minutes of the game and within 26 seconds we hey, man, you, ain't got, go- you ain't got to tell people I'd be running on CP time like <laughs> that, I, well, that I, I didn't say it Golly. I didn't say it. I didn't, yeah, you were fucking never, thinking it. And, no, and <laughs> it was, I'm not complaining. My point being, you missed that we gave up a. It was very offside, but a goal in the first 26 seconds. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, it's just like, man, I, I hadn't even got my damn laptop open to take my notes. And I here just we are. put my tweet in saying the yeah. game is started. And we're underway, and it's like, oh shit! Like honestly, like it, that that might not have been the fastest goal in Premier League's history, but like it almost takes that long to run from the center of the pitch to the yeah, goal. Yeah. So like it was pretty damn what close. What minute was it scored in? It, it would have been the first minute. First minute. Yeah, so it was, 20, it was, it was literally 24 seconds in. Yeah. yeah. I want to say there's been a goal scored at like 15 or 17 seconds. I mean, it's yeah. possible. It, 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 was, it was quite it's close. It's right there. So and, and I didn't miss it. We watched. We were watching okay. it in the car on the way here. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. But the point being, like it started, it looked a little scary up front. It's just like everyone was just a little sleepy at the beginning. But yeah. I feel like that actually was like. Luckily, he was an entire like yard offside, so yeah. it was no big deal. And I think it might have woken the guys up a little bit. And yeah, got everybody kind of like ready to go. Yeah, I mean, we scored we're five minutes later. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're, we're also two games. I think two games in hand uh, on United, and yep. they are about to line up to play City right now. So you got to imagine that City is probably going to win that game. Well, now, United this is, is this without is Ronaldo, Ronaldo, without Cavani. They have only one healthy striker in Rashford. Like they're not looking like they're going to score a lot of goals. Yeah, today. yeah, and yeah. you know, Harry Maguire is you know. Under yes. under siege apparently yeah, yeah, internally yeah, yeah. And, according and, to Will. Listen, I know he's big. I know he stands slabbing shoulders above everyone else. But he's you know, a fridge. He, he he Harry Maguire has basically been forced into their team. Yep, he's so overrated. But yep. he caught he costs eighty million, so they have to play him. Well, they and Will, you were if, you, if you have City's money. You're not Jack Grealish is playing today, but they're not forced to play him. They could just develop yeah. him at their own pace because they don't yeah. get they don't give a shit how much money they paid for. Him. And yeah, that's yeah. The funny. The phrase you just said, "develop Jack Grealish," mm-hmm. like he was the target in the summer, yeah. like internally in the league. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? We're just going to give him some time to get a little better. Yeah. But no, you yeah. were saying earlier, Will, that like there is rumors of inter- internal strife surrounding Maguire. That you know there are. Parties of the team that don't want to see him in the team. Yep. Yes, yeah, bit, and bit of strife here. Yeah, strife. there's there's a growing number of players that have that concern where they they don't want him uh, uh, in the squad. Yeah, and he's their captain. Yep, and it's it's wild over at Old Trafford right, right now. Yeah, I'm, it's I, wild. Man United is in shambles. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, agree. They're with you. in shambles, and you know. But the other thing that was also alarming with that is some of that party, some of those parties that are saying that about McGuire are also saying the same thing about Ronaldo. I mean, I mean Ronaldo's hurt now, so he's out right yeah. now. 
But they're also making the same comments with Ronaldo where it's like, we don't want him in the squad either because they think that he's actually being a detriment to the team because he's constantly calling for the ball all the time. And then he's like his negativity when he doesn't receive it is. Or is when someone else messes up. Right. Yeah. That's, that's been a thing. I, and I'm a fan of Ronaldo, but that, that's been a thing. Throughout his, his yeah. entire career, especially when he became when he was his first day at Manchester United, when he was recognized as the best player in the world, since then, that's been his kind of yeah. way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now he set a standard yeah. of of high productivity to where most of the teams he's in, that's his way. But it's like, listen, he's this way, but yeah. he will win us games and yeah. leagues and Champions Leagues. And, right. and yeah, he's yeah. done that across yeah, the street. Yeah, he has done that. But I, I could totally understand, it, especially some of the young guys that are like, you know, don't want this negativity around. Right. Could you imagine if Ronaldo, if, if when Ronaldo was first in the team, if Giggs was like that? Yeah. Or Scholes was like well, that? Yep. And Ronaldo, and, and, and how he would have felt as an, as an 18, 19, 20 year yeah. old. Well, you and, know. The, and, that, and so that's a direct relation to what we just had going on near the end of January with Obama yeah. Yang. Yeah. 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 Right? Like, we, like, I think every fan loved Obama. Yeah. I think most of the players on the team love Obama. Mm-hmm. However, the negativity was there. And yeah. whether whether it was only between Obama Yang and Arteta doesn't matter. The yeah. negativity was there. Yep. Right? And and it definitely could it you could see it weigh on the minds of the players. Yeah. Like we didn't play the same that we are currently right now. And so we decided to quote unquote cut dead weight. Yeah. You know, it's not obviously that's not dead weight, but you know, we cut that that negativity out and look at our result you know because you you talked about just at the beginning of this episode you know being on the contingency of not being pleased with us not really yeah. doing any movement in january i was on the other end of that and you and i had those conversations all the time yeah i i was okay with us not really getting much because we did have a couple people in mind that we wanted to try to get but the price tag was too large and so we said you know what we'll just wait to the summer yeah we, oh, we or, believe or, we believe in our team and we're gonna go with it and, and here's the thing. I, I was like, okay, then we should be looking at loans. And apparently we were looking at loans, yeah. but none of those panned out either. Yeah. And yeah, in yeah. my mind, I was like, and I still kind of sort of feel this way, but I'm like, listen, of all the of all the footballs in the world, and, and we are looking for a certain standard, so some of those are just not to the standard, yeah. but of all the football, even all the footballs in the world that are good footballers, like we couldn't find one person, yeah. one person, yeah. especially yeah, a striker, because Aubameyang has left, and I... I think the team might actually, it's like a, a sort of addition by subtraction. Yeah. I think the team, and we've proven it, if you look at the statistics and, and goals per game and, and just our productivity, it's actually been higher yep. when Obama Yang has been gone. Yep. However, in my mind, I was like, okay, I, I'm not, I don't think we can challenge for a top four place with yeah. Lacazette and Inketia as our main strikers. Right. But... But we're doing it so far. Well, yeah. now, here's, I, have, here's, I have no so idea here's how. Thing. Well, I'll tell you how. So, far. so, so what, what is what looks like it's going to happen? Because now I, I have a lot more belief. So it looks like you will have been right in that conversation, yeah. and I will have been wrong. Well, you know, I, I don't want to go I've that wrong far before. Yet. One like, time back in like 06. Oh, it happens. Wrong now, here, here I'm going to throw a little cold water on the, on all this because if you look at the results since the loss to Liverpool in the EFL Cup, yep. uh, we drew Burnley mm-hmm. nil nil, one nil over Wolves. 2-1 over Brentford. Now that's a good that's a good win. Brentford's that is looking win. pretty good. Yeah. But then and you they got, are well gonna stay up. Like and they're they gonna are. be around for but a while. Then you got two that's one a, over that's Wolves. A well-run and club. Wolves Wolves are in shambles right now. Yeah. And today's three two over Watford. So yeah. it's not like we are beating the creme de la creme right now. No, but and, but no, I mean but the we, goal we look production. we look better yeah. doing it. We look better the yeah. uh, the offense has looked better. We look yeah. better doing it. And think, think about our perform we lost the game. But think about our performance uh, against Man City before I mean before all this stuff happened. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of was the performance, and yeah, we lost that game, but we didn't lose it. Let's put it this way: we didn't lose it because of the way we played. No, yeah. no. But we like, lost it. You for look ex- at the games that we have left, reasons. and like we obviously have Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea. Spurs, yeah. You know, we've got Leicester coming up next week. We have one more United. Or have we played in the past? Uh, we got United coming up yeah. in the end of one April. More. April, yeah. Okay. You know, we got West Ham. We still got to play. I mean. Uh, Palace is surging under Vieira right sure, now. Sure. We've got a lot of tough games coming we up, but we're doing what we have to because we need to beat these teams. Oh yeah, no. no, no in I'm order not, to, I'm not trying to prepare our, in order no. to be in a good spot. Right. Yeah. So, so we need to be in a situation where if we lose to United or Chelsea or Spurs, hopefully not, or Liverpool, that we can absorb that loss and still be in the top no, four. We have That's put what ourselves we're doing now. in the best yeah. position yeah. we can, but I still think that when we come up in, the, in this, and like, oh no, you know, we've got. 
Oh, and the video's dead. All right, well, for those of you watching on News Channel 8, we're all drunk right now, and you're looking at the wall. Anyhow. You're looking at Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, well, you're, you're looking, looking at, like, Ronaldo's taint up yeah. there. Uh, so this will be an audio-only podcast, but that's all right. Yeah. So anyhow, the thing with me, where, where I'm coming from, is, like, we've, we've, we've done what we can with what we've got right now. We, are, we have done the best we can. I still think that in the tough games coming up, and we're going to have a lot of midweek games for those makeup games. Yeah. Like I said, for the Liverpool game, the Chelsea game, the, the Tottenham be, game, they're all going to be, be Thursdays. Yep. And so you're going to be jamming fixtures in at a time where we're not expecting to play two games a week. It's going to be telling to what we can accomplish and what we can't accomplish with no, basically, reserves because every week in the 20, there's dudes that you've never heard. It's true, but yeah. you know, keep in mind, too, like ESR was out today because of COVID. So that does help us on the winger side. We can, you know, rotate wingers around. We have Pepe still, so that's two. That's we have we have the rotation on the winger side. Tommy Asu eventually will his Correct. legs will work again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's and I, I'm kind of worried a little bit about it just because at first when it happened, it, it just seemed, you know, and even the club kind of reported it as nothing major. And Tommy here Asu, we are, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. and here we are three, four weeks later, and he's still. I mean, well, he's, the last know, two games, he hasn't even been in the squad. Major to me is like a torn ACL, where right, he's going to be gone for twelve months, fair. you know, nine months. Like this is obviously a muscle thing, and those things are unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, major is like we know we're going to be gone with this dude's going to be gone for for months. Yeah, you but, know? And, but I, and that's to, that's it's unfortunate that that's how it works. But like, yeah, you to, know. to my knowledge, though. It, he didn't tear anything. Like he didn't tear a muscle. No, but that's what I mean. Like muscles, you know, when you have strains and that sort of thing. Like you rush. Like when we rushed him back in that Liverpool game, he was clearly not ready to true. play. And that's I'm true. reasonably sure that caused to that that, that caused more worse. harm. Yeah. You know, and like there's, uh, I understand when we brought him back. I mean, it was a chance for silverware that we're probably not going to get, or we're definitely not going to get at this point anywhere else this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you take that risk, but that's I'm sure that. Uh, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I am reasonably confident that's why they're giving him ample time now. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. You know, but to, to, to swing back around to the whole, like, we're not bringing anybody in because we couldn't get who we wanted, you know, to your point, Joey, like, yeah, there's got to be a loney or two out there. Like, would would we have had to overpay for them? Probably. Yeah. But you look at But well, that's the kind benefit. of a no-obligation a no situation. Well, and it's a no-obligation situation. And also, the benefit is if you bring in a mid, an attacking mid- and a striker, we're all but a shoe in for Champions League, yeah. which is a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Which yeah. covers whatever you overpaid on him this time, and then you can yeah. go get the guy you wanted yeah. in the summer anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, it, to me, like, I appreciate that we have a plan and that there is, I don't want to say trust the process, but, you know, there is, <laughs> there is obviously, like, a, a template that we're looking to, yeah. to fill out. And, like, I understand that there's commitment to that goal, and I appreciate that we have, you know, for the first time since Wenger, you know, there is a definitive vision. Like this is what we there, want to be. There's a real vision, and, and we're going to get guys to work so far. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. get guys who fit that vision, and yeah. nobody else. Like yeah. I appreciate the commitment to it, yeah. but I feel like the inflexibility is harkening back to the Wenger well, days, well, where it's like this is what we do, and we're going to keep doing it, see, no I, matter I, what. I do disagree with that a little, and here's why: I I don't think we're as inflexible as everyone thinks. Um, if you talk to Rob, <laughs> Rob of the Oak, my boy. Uh, He'll say, anytime we're looking at somebody that's like 28, he'll say, oh, no, we won't sign him, he's 28. Okay? So, Mikel Arteta has come out and said, I watched an interview of like two days ago of him, where he said, hey, there's, there's, Debrana. Uh, there's the squad, you know, we, we definitely have a project and we're focusing on youth, but you need the right mix of youth and experience in the yeah. squad. So, if there's an experienced player out there that we, that we want to target and that we're getting, you know, we're going to bring in some of those types of players as well. Yeah. So, so it can't, you can't think, oh, he's more than 23, we're not going to sign him. That's not the way. Because we have a team full of 23-year-olds, they're never going to accomplish anything because you need guys Thomas Party's age, you need guys Granit Xhaka's age and Lacazette's yeah. age, and so on and so forth. Well, I'm Cedric's not talking age. like an age perspective, but like they obviously have guys they are targeting and that they want. Sure, yeah. And they say, if we can't get those guys, we're not going to get so, anybody, so that's the, not going to so work. With the inflexibility, what, were you, what, what kind of inflexibility? My, the inflexibility is saying, these are the guys we want. If we can't get them, we're getting nobody. Oh, okay. like you have to be able to pivot and say, "All right, we cannot get the guys we want right now, yeah. long term. That's unfortunate. It's January. You know, you, oh. you know, players are on a premium in January anyway. Yeah. You need to be able to pivot and say, "All right, what can we do to improve our standing this year to get us in a better position to yeah. sign those players in the summer?" Yeah. You okay. Know, I, like, st I still disagree with that, but it was something different than what I thought you were saying. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> no. Like, here's the thing: if like you know, to what you said earlier, I said if you bring in a couple guys, even if they're just loans, yeah. we are in a better position for Champions League. Yeah. At which point, you are in a better position to sign yeah. those guys you want. Yeah. 
come summertime. I, I, and, so, I don't think know. we're inflexible as far as like the specific guys that we're after. I think we're inflexible as far as the, the attitude. The, 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 no, the profile. The right, player yeah. profile. Yeah, I'm, I'm so there's lots of guys to that, a man. Okay, okay. But it's just so, like, look. So you okay? So yeah. My, my point is. So that, then I do agree that we are inflexible in that way. We yeah. we have a specific thing that we're looking for. Yeah. And if we can't get it, we're just gonna get. Let's nothing. say there's eight eight players that fit this, this exact profile. Can't get any of them. We're not gonna do anything right. else. Exactly. We are inflexible there. So I apologize. And, I, no, I misunderstood. No, fair, but like that's just, and like and I'm not saying we should sign some dude long term that we don't want as part of our project. Right. But loans. Right. Are, are out of the. I wanted Wynaldum on loan because I read Wynaldum. Them. I mean, we got and, and we could send them back. And, yeah, yeah. and we could right send now. them back. You know, but but I think if we would have gotten Wynaldum, it would have been like we're definitely not buying. It. Like this is just a stopgap. Right, yeah. yeah, and but, he would have been a great stopgap because yeah. I really rate him as as a yeah. player. But and I was year, like, please please bring him in because it doesn't matter if he doesn't necessarily fit the profile. He's a really good player. He'll probably improve any any team that he's in. He will probably improve, and we need help in that specific. Position right, yeah. and that he might not be Champions exa- League yeah, for exactly. sure. He not, might not be the exact profile. So, like, I agree, we we were inflexible in that, and I think that we could have used him. And and as good as we're doing now with a player like him, we might be doing even better. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah, and again, because like, we're if, not that, doing if there's poorly. one thing that dude has, it's a it's an engine. Yeah. That dude can run all day, and like even we look at thirty one, thirty two. But like it, again, like the the games that matter are coming up. We, the game, yeah. like you're right. We we have done what we needed to do in these last four games. Yeah. But the ones that are going to define our season are the next you know six or eight or whenever they reschedule the two yet to be scheduled. Games. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you know that's going to tell the story, and you know like you and I talked about it on Twitter when it happened. You know like any. Any underwhelming performances are going to be measured by, well, if only we'd gone and gotten XYZ yeah. in January to shore yep. up this problem. And, yep. you know, that's it's fair. And, you know, they've, they've basically admitted, like, this summer is make or break. Yeah. So, you yeah. know. I think, I think we might have a summer that maybe not as far as quantity, but that was as important as last summer, this past summer yeah. was to us. Yeah. I think in terms of importance, I think this summer is going to equal last summer. Yeah. Because yeah. last summer we know that. It was it was so important with the likes of Tomi Asu, yeah. Ben White, and, and these players that we brought in Odegaard. that were real Odegaard on a permanent yeah. that were real Odegaard has been our best player this year, mm, and, yeah. and and I'm not sure that it's I close agree. right now. Um, I, as the more I think about it, the more I am certain he's going to be our club captain for the next foreseeable future. I think Kieran Tierney will be a vice captain. He's the popular choice as far as fans. Yeah. Everyone wants him, but let's let's not forget. Uh, Odegaard captains his country as well, yep. um, and he's really shown. I, you know, in watching him closely, he's really shown that sort of leadership capability. Uh, I'm always a fan of a, of a midfielder as captain as well, just because they can kind of be everywhere and anywhere if they ever need to engage yeah. with the referee. They can do that as well. But Odegaard is really shown, especially since we bought him permanently. I think he's really started to show his natural leadership skills, yeah. and he definitely leads by example because. He is a guy, and, you know, when Meza Ozil first came, we thought of him like this. He's a guy that can really change a game with a one or two moments of brilliance. Yeah, yeah. And he's starting to do that. Yeah. Actually, maybe even on a more consistent basis than, than early Ozil. Yeah. Because he, he has affected the last several games that he's played in. He's, well, and today, he finally put a shot in. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know. Yeah, and that's what I said. So he's, And he's so composed yeah. in those yeah. types of areas. He's, well. he's definitely grown into, into his role yeah. with the team. Yeah. You could tell that, you know, even though he played with us for half of the season last year, when he came back, he now that he was here permanently, now that he knew that it this is my like job, different, yeah. like you could tell early on in the season, he was a little bit hesitant because he was just like, now that I'm here, I need to be that guy. Yeah. Right? Like when he was alone, like he was that guy, but yeah. he didn't need to be that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. But now he needed to be that guy. So yeah. it took a, it took a few games, but I agree with you. He's he's 100% in his role, full, full go now. And he is comfortable with it. Yeah. He, this is his team. Yeah. I mean, he he is the puppet master with this team. I, I he, agree. He pulls all the strings. I he's hustling everywhere he goes. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's and great. He's, and he's doing his, his job defensively as well, which is really nice to see. Sometimes you look at players that play in his position, sort of a creative attacking midfield position, and you look at that sort of number 10. Yeah. And you think, okay, well, if they don't track back, that's just the price we pay. Yeah. But, like, he, but really, he really does his work. You well, know yeah. what I mean? You know, to talk, so it, it reminds me of, of, how, of Sandy Cazorla when he was yeah. at the yeah. club. Yeah. He, he was brilliant attacking-wise, but he also did his work defensively. And then yeah. when he moved back to play a deeper role, 
you're like this little five foot nothing, five foot negative two dude <laughs> is like the best. The, he's like got yeah, the six, best ball poacher in the world. Six interceptions a game, yeah. and, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. So well, and to, to, you know, as Tom would say, like Tom is one of the biggest KT you know lovers that there are. Oh, but so to, am I. So am but, I. Oh, and so yeah. am I. But to his point. Can't be fucking captain. Nobody can understand his ass. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, exactly. What the fuck did you just say? You know, you know? Odegaard speaks like four or five languages. Yeah. Oh, he's, he's um, a polyglot. Well, yeah, there you go. yeah. So yeah. you know, he, it's it's one of those things. That, and you know, he just he looks like a captain out there. Yeah. When I watch him, I think that guy looks like a captain. That's I think Tierney. I think Tierney will be vice captain uh, or one of the vice captains. And I think either uh, Ben White or Gabriel will kind yeah. of round it out. I don't think we're going to get back to a point where. Granite Jacket is part of the captain setup no, unless no. all three of those guys aren't playing. Yeah. yeah. Cause because I think we've all resigned ourselves to the fact that Lacazette will probably go in the summer. So yeah, yeah, we're talking to him about a new contract, but the writing's been on the wall with that one yeah. for for a while. And of course, you know, we're supposedly looking at the Jonathan Davids and the Alexander yeah. Isaks of the world. Oh, and, yeah. oh, you know. It kind of reset itself, but it's good. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, it, it's just kind of one of those things where you know that 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 dude. I feel comfortable with it because at first I was like, "Oh yeah, KT captain, KT captain. He's the obvious choice." And then I started watching Odegaard, and then you know he's played a couple times for yeah. for his national team as well. And it's like this guy is an actual leader. Yeah. You know, you don't see it when you're wishing for someone else to be the captain, but if you sit back and watch, you're like, "Yeah, yeah, this guy's an actual." And we need that. We need because I feel like I feel like like captain wise, we've been so. Like the, it's it's been such a position of impermanence. Kashelny was us. the last kind of reliable, yeah, going to be a captain yeah. for a couple of years yeah. kind of guy that I can remember. And and sure. we ha- and we had some captains b- before that that I felt were reliable, like Murdasacker, yeah. like Arteta, like and then like Van Persie was captain, but then he you know he went to Manchester United. So I don't I kind of don't even really count him. Yeah. I don't really count Vermaelen either. So then you would have to go back to Cesc Fabregas. Yeah, William Gallus was shit. <laughs> And then you go back to the Vieiras and yeah, right. those point, guys and yeah. the Tony Adams and yeah, yeah. Saul Campbell's as guys that are like vices. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you yeah. Know, so I mean, it's been a while I, since 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 we had a, a Vieira type captain. I would say Murdasacker and Kashelny were as close as we've yeah. ever been to that. that. Yeah. you know, yeah. leadership wise. Yeah, and and it's telling with Murdasacker because he stuck around the club. Yeah. even yep. after his playing days. Were yep. Over. You know. Yeah, we were we were trying to we were we were trying to dredge up uh, vintage songs today. I was like, fuck, sing BFG, whatever. Let's yeah. do it. Um, but let's we got a big fucking German. German. Yes, we do. Um, so I know we're trying to make this a short one because Joey's got somewhere to be. So let's just kind of break down the game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the early the early goal. Thank God, offside. You know yep. that kind of and that kind of woke us up. And then immediately in the fifth minute, we've got Odegaard with a great set of pass to yeah. your point to Saka, and he just threads it right in there, yep. right on the corner. You know, very very technical. Yeah. Yep. And, there was a bunch of dudes that could have gotten on that. They didn't. Yeah. They put it where he needed to be. And, and also, it seems like, it's especially, it seems like, because we, we all love our young players, Saka, Smith Rowe, yeah. Martinelli, yep. Odegaard to a degree, because he's still somewhat young. But it seems like Odegaard and Saka are really starting to develop an understanding. Yeah. Damn it. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> they're really starting Once to. Once again, enjoy Ronaldo's <laughs> taint. To de- develop an understanding, um, which is re- really nice to see. And it's really, it's like exciting. I'm finally, because for a few years I've felt disconnected from the club. This is a club that I've been supporting for over 20 years yeah. now. So I felt disconnected in recent, in recent years with the club. And, and I'm starting to, the excitement is starting to come back and to me. you can so thank even, Arteta for that. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And so, and I know the the fucking Arteta out brigade is gonna piss themselves or piss themselves when he gets a new contract and when he signs it because he will because he will have it. it. Oh, he's not he's he not going he's not going to city. He's yeah. not like number one. Pep's not leaving. No, Where they he gonna say go? he's gonna leave in twenty. Where's he gonna go? Barca. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, listen, if Pep can go to friggin' if Pep can go to Brighton and make them winners, I'll have respect for Pep. <laughs> but that's fair. Uh, un- until then. The, he's gone to super clubs everywhere he's gone to. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp took Borussia Dortmund and won the Bundesliga, beat beat out Bayern Munich for yeah. the Bundesliga. Yep. Yep. That just doesn't happen. Yeah, the only time in the what last yeah. twelve years. Yeah, Jurgen Basically. Klopp. Jurgen Klopp took that Borussia Dortmund team yep. to a Champions League final. Yep. 
that just doesn't happen. Yep. That is why I think Klopp is is, is a better manager than Pep. than Pep. Thomas Tuchel might be a better manager than Pep. Uh, I agree with that because he he was the name I was just about to say, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I don't want to get too far off the game. Yeah, one of course, one yeah. the things I wanted to talk about was all three goals, beautiful, beautiful team goals. Yeah. Yes. I mean, great ball movement. I mean, Lacazette had two assists His back heel set up on that yeah. first on, the, on Soccer's goal. Yeah, oh, that's what Lacazette God. brings you. He yeah. didn't have that many goals, but he got six assists this seven season. Seven now. Seven. seven yeah, seven yeah. assists. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He's great at involving yeah. the wingers and the other players into the game. And then his that's, layoff to Martinelli's goal as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just right at the top of the box. Did he you know, have two cool. assists today? Yeah. Two assists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he was coming in with five yeah. assists, and then with yep. the two, he's at seven now. Um, but so you know, even if, as a striker, if he's not scoring, he, he's been affecting the game. Which yeah. you know, yeah, and like his impact. hustle was always going to make him that guy. Yeah, I yeah. think. And but but nobody like talk. Remember when Harry Kane was not scoring goals, but he was assisting every goal that Son scored. Yeah, right. At the beginning of like or la- last season, I think yeah. it was. He had like one goal, but he had yep. like twelve assists, and everyone <laughs> was like, "Oh, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread." Right. Lacazette you know? does the same thing, and people are saying he doesn't score enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No like, one gives oh, a shit. Yeah, you know. Now, Watford's diving today. Oh, terrible! They, they, I mean, Hernandez was just a cut. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first one, he goes down and he rolls around like Neymar, and there's zero contact. Mm-hmm. Then Ben White has his like his elbow. Yes, was around his shoulder, but he grabs his temple like someone just punched him. Like fucking Tyson just knocked yeah. his ass out. And it's just like how. <sighs> I mean, I don't want to get too deep in the referee because we know where that all stands, but like, yeah. man, like the first one, especially, you said, well, like he's standing right there looking at it. Yeah. How do you miss that? The, the fact that he called that foul on, on Odegaard on the corner of that box when, I mean, he's, he's eight yards away from it. There is not even remotely any contact. And he just goes down. Yeah, he trips he goes over. Down and he, he rolls all over the place. He tripped yeah. over his own heel. Yeah. yeah, he literally tripped over his own heel and goes down, thinking that he got clipped. And the ref buys into it and gives him the call. Yeah. And it was. A, I mean, if I'm being honest, and I said this during the game to you, which is that position of that free kick for me, I'm more nervous about that free kick than position a on than one, a straight yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because there's so much potential for a good cross with curl, a good shot yeah. with curl, a straight on shot with no curl. They're, like You're at an angle where you can do They've so got much options. more. you got options yeah. from yeah. that angle. Because straight on, you basically have to shoot. Yeah. Basically. Like, and if the wall is positioned correctly, you're not going to yeah. score. You have to, you that, to that, shoot that, a world. That, that, like, you know, like that off the corner situation, yeah. they only had a two-man wall going. Yep. Yeah. yep. Hey, how and about uh, how about Thomas Party shooting the ball and not putting it into low uh, orbit? He did. It was yeah. it was below the cross. Yeah. They, they that, still didn't that, go in, but no, it was. That, but they were not the in low minute, orbit. Yeah, that know. curl in the 18th minute was very very close. Yeah. yeah, and it was below the cross. I mean, Arteta came out to this week. I want to say, and it's like you guys would be surprised by the goal that he scores in practice. Goddamn right, we'd be surprised. Yeah, because yeah. we don't see it during a game. Yeah, yeah. apparently he yeah. scores really nice goals. Yeah. all the yeah. time. So Worldies. fucking bring that shit on Saturday and Sunday, and let's. I was telling them, I was like, man, the time that he scores from 20 yards out. I'm flipping a fucking table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I will fair. lose my shit. It's uh, yeah. like me with Eddie. When if he take if I've yeah. ne- I I said this a few weeks ago, I've never seen Eddie and Keddie score a goal if he has taken three or more touches. And today, the one where he yeah, I heard you yelling about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, even when he hit the post today, he, it, his shot was his third touch. Yeah, so he didn't score. And so, so what you're trying to say is he's a striker. He's a garbage man. He cleans yeah, up he's the garbage. A poacher. He's a poacher. He cleans up the garbage. That, that's not that's not quite what poaching is to me, but. I understand. He does his best work inside the 18-yard box. Yeah, when the ball is just yeah. kind of rattling around, he finds. Yeah, exactly. like, Honestly, like, having a like nose for Raul, goal is one good. of the best strikers that there ever yeah. was. Like that is him. a good thing to have. Yeah. But like that, Ketty is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ronaldo R nine Ronaldo. Oh, no, he's no, no, not no. that who can, or Luis Suarez who can get the ball in his own penalty area, take it a hundred yards upfield and score. Yeah, no. Eddie and Ketty is not what no. that. You know no, what I mean? I like everyone, like no one thinks he's that. No yeah, one's like under yeah. false impressions that yeah. he is that. So yeah. you, you yeah. move on and you play. I tell you what, he's 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 halfway decent in the in the eighteen. Though, I'll tell you that. So he hit him with the quick, with the quick. I, man, when I played tracker back in the day, this is exactly what I did: get the ball, get the ball inside of twenty yards to goal, take one dribble, hit him with the one quick step over, and then just push off and just blast the it. other way as fast See as I could, happens. and put a shot on goal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because the keeper's out of position. Yeah, you know, you three, got a chance. three, four touches, like you said, like bang, bang, yeah. bang, and then I'm shooting yeah. on goal. And yeah. it's almost as if they don't expect it. You yeah. Know? So and he hit the post right when yeah, he did yeah, that yeah yeah I mean it, it was right there it was yeah. right it was right there at first so 
He looked so fluid in his movement that I thought it was Pepe at first. Yeah, I did too. And then when I he hit, and then when he hit it with his right foot, I was like, oh, that's not Pepe. Yeah. <laughs> like he hit it cleanly and nicely yeah, with his right foot. Yeah. Pepe will hit it with his right foot, but it doesn't look great. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's it's, it's, it's his left foot is a magic usually, wand. Yeah, it's the thing that he can do, but it's another thing that he wants. To yeah, do. yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, I know Joey's got places to be, so we're gonna wrap yeah, it up at this yeah. point. But you know, it's it. We did. What we had to do today. We held out. We we saw it out, and we got the win. So the win takes up four, depending the out- outcome of the derby today, which right now, as we record, is already one, one, one nil city. So really, the outcome of that. Uh, next up, we got Lester on Sunday. Joey has lost his mind. Uh, but we're gonna, you know, play it. I think next week we find out who really who we really are. So yeah, yep. Until then, I am Ryan. That is Joey. Yes, sir. That is Will. Yeah, gunners. Yeah. And we'll catch you next time. We out.